Thank you so much for being with me today. Appreciate the time because I know you guys did a presentation earlier as well. No worries. Thank um, you. So you talked a little bit about this um, in the presentation earlier, but um, can you talk a little bit more about the importance of making a sci-fi story that was sort of designed for everyday people and what it means to you specifically to create a diverse, inclusive cast of characters with a story to tell for everybody? I mean, right from the beginning, like I think, you know, as we stated, like both Pat and I come from like really humble beginnings and, you know, that was the one thing we were kind of feeling we were missing. Like, you know, there's a lot of people who come from, from those humble beginnings and they want to see themselves kind of represented. Um, also, like diversity was like, that was just never a question. It's something that like I've always, I've been a huge advocate for. And, and um, so it just made sense, you know, um, to, to have both of those in, in the show. Um, for me, you know, having this really cool sci-fi show like with the black family at the center, it's like it's it's very gratifying. And um, my goal is really like I want people to fall in love with these characters. You know, these are like characters are like you know my kids and, and and you know my wife and my family. Um, and I want people to see like oh no these these guys these are just fun guys. These are really fun characters. And I think the grounded aspect like that that's just like really makes things like really makes people attached to it like and feel like oh yeah i can I, I i get it i you know i'm dealing with the same thing i i, I work at amazon all the time and mm -hmm. i never can see my kids you know like yeah it's yeah. i think having that that it's like racial diversity and economic diversity yeah. where you know which has always been in sci-fi all the john carpenters yeah. you know it's like there's keith all david the keith, right keith david's right right there with him going through it or yafet koto like it's always it's there um and uh I also think too that I hope a lot of people will be surprised by how much they relate to it. Mm -hmm. That's what I like where it's like, they're like, wow, that's like me and my family. Like it, that would be really, I really hope that happens um, where they're surprised by it. I mean, even as an adult, there were a lot of things that were very relatable, right? Like the not being able to spend time with your kids for certain things or like, I'm a travel and entertainment writer, right? Like I'm never home. So right. I absolutely <laughs> could relate to some of those moments where you're like, oh, I just want to be here. And my kid's like, you know, oh, you're not going to be home for my birthday. I was like, you're 16. Do you actually care? Like, <laughs> you want to hang out with me, but okay. Like, fun, you know, fun fact, whatever. Um, so, you know, obviously you created the character, but if you found out, you know, one of your parents, your dad, whomever was an intergalactic bounty hunter, what would you do? Like, what would be your actual reaction? I'd be like, when's training start? You know, <laughs> you need a partner? Like, I would be down. Yeah, I'd be like, Sean. Yeah, we'd be in that, I'd be in that trunk. I'm like, let's go. <laughs> but would you be throwing the things out of the trunk because you didn't have space? I was like, how did you not know that was money, dude? I was like, okay, you definitely missed being home a little bit because yeah. something got lost in translation there. It's like, oh man. But I've <laughs> seen like, that. Like, whew. I've seen that with my, like, so my daughters, they do stuff. I'm like, wait, that's like, why did you, you didn't think we need water? Like, you took it out. Like, oh, I, I had to put my backpack there. What? Like that's yeah. very, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're like, what, how did you not understand that? <laughs> oh my goodness. And so, uh, you know, along the lines of that, if you're a bounty hunter, what would be your like tool or weapon of choice to help like track down, you know, your mark? Oh, I think I would have a drone. I would have a, like a, dr like a flying drone that could help me like keep sight on it. You know, that's one thing we really didn't want like KRS to lead the ship, but like, now I was thinking about like, oh man, that would have been kind of cool, actually. I think I like I like dad's camouflage ability. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. I mean, yours, you don't have to leave the house. You can just kick back and let the drone catch him. <laughs> but <laughs> that's true. Yeah. You could be like watching shows. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I thought that that one to that on our show is pretty, pretty cool. And so I know you weren't. Uh, you didn't want to talk too much about the Chillas just based or, or like what their, you know, their role in the show, which is totally fine. But can you tell us a little bit about the inspiration for them and where the characters came from? All right. I, okay. So I'll let you I'll, tackle this one. I'm going to be very, I'm going to be very careful about without, without spoiling anything. Sure. Sure. We, uh, okay. 
All right, I think I can do this, Ev. Let's okay, see. it's tricky. We, I don't know how to do it. So we were so you know we know we're making an animated thing, right? We know someone at some point is going to be like, give us cute things, like, and you know, give us cute fuzzy things. And <laughs> we always kind of you know you know how the Ewoks were kind of you know a lot of people love the Ewoks, but a lot of fans didn't love the Ewoks and felt like they were just there to sell toys. We kind of took that we idea and played with it and like <laughs> what if the thing that seems like it's just there to sell toys is like the crux of the plot right cool. that's all right. that's all we'll say yeah okay no that's fair i just you know they're there's i mean they are adorable but right like <laughs> i i get it all those everything like that has something in it right i mean gremlins right like you have yes. the gremlins and then you have gizmo who's like the cute little furry mm -hmm. guy before he's you know monster <laughs> um <laughs> I just wanted to say thank you so much for taking time with me today to chat. Awesome. I do have to wrap up, but I will just say fun fact because you actually brought it up, Patrick, just briefly, but you mentioned John Carpenter, which I can relate to. And also with his humble beginnings, um, he's my grandfather's first cousin. So I, um, oh, I, I have awesome. a little bit of like a horror love in my blood, but it's like, Oh, yeah, so I know seriously yeah, so. we're not worthy but like yeah. I know where that guy was born and I'm very intimately familiar with humble beginnings so wow mm -hmm. no wow. he that's why yeah. those movies feel so grounded it's yeah. like they do he ain't he ain't Hollywood right mm -mm. nope didn't come from there not at all came from a tiny little middle of nowhere in New York northern town <laughs> that's amazing wow that's awesome so yeah but thank you great so much talking to you Jenna. yes likewise have a great day thank you Take thank care. you so much